Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, or good night, whatever time of dimension that you are in. This is your host, Chris. Welcome to Interstellar Frequency. Well, hello there to you all. Right now, this is actually being double lived, or, you know, this is a recording live live recording over here and then this is happening over here of you know what you're seeing on the screen doing the recording the kids have been asking me they're like dad you gotta go live you gotta do it live and i'm like uh, you go figure you know the kids are the ones that push you into doing something and you're like okay fine i i will do that I will go live for you guys. That way you can sit here and watch me because they've been really wanting to watch me do this. It's like, no, you okay. If you want to watch me, then you're going to watch it live over here. <laughs> so that way I can do what I need to do here with studio sound quality. Cause you got it. You cannot, you cannot mess with the quality of sound when you're trying to do a podcast. It's very important. Anyhow, so this week has been very, very a unique week. We ended up chopping down a bunch of the trees around the house, and that was a lot of fun, getting that taken care of. And, oh my God, for some apparent reason, after us chopping down the trees and all that craziness, my uncle decided, or I can't remember, I think it was the day before he did that, he decided that he wanted to jump off the roof into the pool of only like, 48 inches of not even 48 inches it was only 36 inches of water and he did a cannonball it's like dude what are you doing <laughs> you can't jump off the roof into a little three foot pool that ain't gonna save you he smacked his butt it hurt his butt and next day he was like oh that hurts so i thought that was kind of funny i wish i could have had that on camera but then again i'd probably you know somebody would have some kind of way about that and uh Oh, yes, yes. Thank you, kind sir. I'm glad that you're able to see this and watch it happen. The kids are actually watching right now, and this is actually a live recording right now. So that's kind of cool. Um, they've been bugging for it. They want it. They've been wanting to sit here in the studio room and you know watch me do this at the same time. And it's like, no, can't do that. It doesn't work that way. Because in reality-wise, they constantly can't sit still, and neither can I but I can't really blame them. Um, yeah, no, I, you know what? I tried, I tried to talk them out of it. The only thing that caught my attention is I was inside the house, right? So I'm inside the house. We are looking out the back patio, looking at the kids from the pool. The kids are looking up on top of the roof and I'm, you know, me and the wife and everybody are looking around like, what the hell is going on? Why are the kids looking up <laughs> on top of the roof? And then I go running outside because I, I don't see my son. I'm figuring my son is on top of the roof, you know, because he's a daredevil. You know, he's, he's a lot like Uncle Matt. <laughs> and um, no, thank God it wasn't him. It was Uncle David up on top of the roof. It's like, oh, dude, come on, don't do it. Don't do it. I play. I begged and plead. I'm like, no, dude, don't do it. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt so bad. And he did. He, he hit the It's like, plop. <laughs> the whole pool's all. It's <laughs> like, is your butt okay? He's like, ow. <laughs> yeah, no kidding, man. It's like, I thought it would cushion the fall. Not with only three foot of water, it won't. You know, you need a little bit like eight foot drop here. I mean, you know, the distance that you are to the roof, to the distance of, of the ground, you need that extra down below in order to cushion the fall in the water. Oh, man. I, I don't know. That's, I, he wasn't thinking, you know. And although I guess he was high. So <laughs> he, he was highly thinking at that point. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. Don't do that. <laughs> what you, you're setting a bad example of my kids. <laughs> That's all right, though. You know, maybe someday when I actually have an in-ground pool, I'll be able to jump in off the roof, and that, that will be okay after when we have a deep pool. But uh, unbelievable. 
we got all the trees knocked down on the one side of the house, which is great. So now we're going to do the other side of the house and get that all knocked down and take that to the dump. And, uh, yeah, so I, I thought that was kind of nice. We, you know, small little achievement on the side. The wife is very, very happy about that. And, um, yeah, <laughs> I tried trying to tell him, man. I was like, dude. You know, this is a very bad idea, man. Like, have you thought this through? <laughs> yeah, look, it looks really good. I understand it looks very good. I understand that, you know, jumping from the top of the roof into a nice pool of water when it's 113 degrees outside sounds really, really refreshing. But the pain that's going to happen behind that is is not not refreshing by any stretch of the means. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget him coming out of the water going, Ow. <laughs> I was like, well, duh. <laughs> what do you expect? Oh, my God. that It so reminds me of a time when I was like a wee lad their age. And it was we were having a pool party at my brother's apartment complex down off of like Bear Valley and the hell was that 7th street i think it was and for some reason he shall not be named <laughs> he knows exactly who he is he, they were all you know um in liquid courage at the moment of time and they decided in my dad oh my god uh they decided to um get up on top of the two-story building and then jump into the pool. And I remember my brother was bleeding out of that one. I don't remember why, though. I don't know where he cracked his face or cracked his leg or cracked something. I know there was some part of cracking some skin somewhere. Probably from hitting the bottom of the damn pool too hard or something. Because, you know, two stories up into, like, probably a five-foot pool. <laughs> Hey, man, that's okay. A seven year, 74-year-old just turned around and crawled up on top of my roof to jump in that little bitty pool that you see in my, my pictures and stuff. He jumped in that from the top of the roof. And it's like, and it reminded me of, like, yeah, I was a little kid, again, watching it happen, but the difference is there's a 74-year-old man deciding to do a cannonball. <laughs> <laughs> and there was no there was no liquid courage to that none there was no liquid courage I, I promise you behind that anyhow turning around and thinking back of when I was a kid and my dad getting so plasterly drunk <laughs> my god my dad was so plasterly drunk my mom was at home at the time and yeah so dad me my brother, some of the friends. We were having some kind of like party at the house over there off of Bear Valley. And yeah, we were like having a swimming party with a lot of alcohol. Or they were having a lot of alcohol, not me. I wasn't having the alcohol. But um, for some reason, there was a dare that came up. It was like, I dare you to jump off the roof up there and into the pool. It's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the good old days, right? So you can't undo the challenge. It's like, yeah, you got to do it, right? You have to. There's just no way around it. And uh, so my brother did it. He jumps off the roof. I think my father was like, yeah, no, because he's you know afraid of heights. So he's not gonna do it. I mean, he'll crawl the outside of the building, you know, with rebar and stuff. But turning around and jumping from the roof into the pool, yeah, no. But somehow my father did get plastically drunk so bad that mom was at home and then there was like this little pickup truck and we, they took me home with my dad. My dad was knocking over things inside the house because he was just lit of 50 sheets to the wind with some kind of booze in his system. And I don't remember if it was whiskey or something. Uh, yeah, I can only imagine it probably was Crown Royal, you know. Uh, and that's what, that's what I'm thinking it was Crown Royal because that was like Dad's favorite or Southern Comfort, probably Southern Comfort. Yeah, Southern Comfort. 
And, uh, you know, turning around and doing that, it's like, oh, my God. So he turns around, gets plastered, starts knocking stuff over in the house. They're like, come on, Chris, you can't do that. Come on. We've got to get you home, man. This is bad. So mom, we call mom. Mom's like, don't bring him back here. You know, she's all mad and upset about it. Keep him with you guys. So I guess that would be almost considered DWI in a way. I don't remember. I was an infant, so I'm, you know, not really an infant. I was just like my kid's age. <laughs> it was a fun time. <laughs> I can only I can see my brother right now just cringing going, "Oh my god, would you shut up?" <laughs> I can see it. I can totally see it. you asshole. <laughs> and my dad, he's in the back of the truck because, you know, we couldn't get him in the front seat of the car, right? You know, dad had to be out in the back because he was acting crazy and wild, right? So, he's in the back seat. Or in the back of the, the bed of the truck. And he had his torch set up from work, which some of you might not know, but the torch set up is this uh, oxygen and settling tank system to uh, cut the rebar and cut metal and stuff. And uh, he's back there, and he's all tangled up in the damn torch set up, and he's like, save yourself, the snake... It's got me, and he's just over-exaggerating about this this torch of his own setup on his truck is just eating him alive, and he, you know, this is like we're in the safari or something at this point in time. <laughs> I can only imagine that this guy had smoked some pot on top of it, and that's what it was. You know, he was in the Amazonian area or something where this, the anaconda snake was, <laughs> it was after him. <laughs> Oh my god, it gets better. It gets so better. <laughs> so we, we 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 get back to the house and I remember mom was just like, oh hell no. <laughs> so my dad's drunk. They drop him off and they head back home and they leave us there, me and dad and mom. And um you know, dad's like, Hey Bonnie, I got something for you, Bonnie, and she's like and she takes off running and slams the door. She's like, no. You know, a couple cuss words went flying after that. Slams the door, locks the door. He's beating on the door. Come on, buddy. You know you're going to like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, amazing what liquid courage does to you. So then, it, you know, she says, no, go away. You know, she locks herself in the bedroom. <laughs> He goes outside and turns around. <laughs> and she, he, <laughs> he turns around, walks outside to the dogs where the dogs, we have this three foot fence area around in the back area. So we have this like half acre lot, right? Where there's, it's fenced in all the way around. But then in the little sub area of the, the back door, we had this little area that was like some green green turtles and rabbits and stuff. And some trees. And uh, Dad goes walking over to the three-foot fence and decides to, like, try to touch or pet the dog or something. So then he flips over the fence, falls to his ass, and is completely at the grog shop. You know, I mean, he's out of it. He's at the grog shop, big time. And he's... Ugh. And the dogs walk up, smelling him and everything, and then they just... They whizzed right all over him. They're just... Pss, it's like... <laughs> he, he got locked out of the house that night. He was so plastered. Mom was so upset with him. It's like, no! <laughs> a poor guy ended up swelling because, you know, it got cold at night time. So he ended up having a swollen face and, you know, poor guy. Because, you know, him... He had this unique condition where he ended up swelling of too much cold air or something like that touched his skin or something. He would he would swell from it. So, yeah. But it's bizarre to see a man that's like my dad's age and all he had was just pot 
and he didn't even have liquid courage, and he decides to just jump off the top of the roof onto the, onto the, on into the pool. <laughs> it's like, oh my god. And yeah, it brought back a childhood memory of exactly what, what it was, and I can only understand what my son was thinking along the lines. It's like, hey, this is cool. I want to do that too. And I think when I was a kid, I was right there along with my brother, going, yeah, let's do this. I want to do that, and I didn't because. Hell, I was way too damn scared swimming anyways. You know, I couldn't even jump in the lifeguard's hands when they were going to protect me. I'm like, no, we're not doing that. So going up from a two-story building, jumping off of a high dive down into the pool, nah, uh, not for me, for sure. I could barely even do one of them little diving board things right off the end of the pool. So yeah, I uh, I just had to share that, that story because that was something that was really remarkable and crazy and all that. And uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I have just now beamed you out of the episode. Are you enjoying this show? Are you finding it intriguing what you're hearing? So you decide to help expand this show for others to hear as well? Take a moment and imagine yourself driving your car on the road. You have an interstellar frequency bumper sticker. The person behind you sees you get out of your car, walks up to you, and says, Excuse me, what is this interstellar frequency that you have on your car? Now, you are in your own time and dimension and space. As someone has just asked you this, imagine for a moment the conversation that you might have at this time. What would be the words you would say about this show? Imagine what it could be. How would you tell it? What would you say to them? Would you immediately tell them? You absolutely got to look this show up on Google and listen to this show. If this happened to me, this is what I would say. Dude, you got to go experience this show. This is the interstellar frequency experience. You will find that your mind will be playing a movie while listening to it. Now that you have just experienced this mentally, I say to you, Go to interstellarfrequency.info forward slash store and find this bumper sticker. Click on it. It will take you to my Etsy store where you can purchase it and have it shipped to you whatever time of dimension that you're in. They also do international shipping across this blue marble floating through space and time. Take a moment and pause this episode as I will do the same for you for eight seconds, which will allow you time to pause and click on the store link in the description below. Thank you. I am now going to be beaming you back to your previously audio recording. So there you have it. You know, hopefully you guys will turn around and go to the merch store and, you know, help purchase something. You know, a bumper sticker. I'm, I'm trying to lower it down so the prices aren't so damn high. I don't know how or why that's that way, but it does seem a little high. I was able to get the, the bumper sticker down a little bit more. So I think it's at like $5 and some change. I don't even know what the shipping is. I'll have to double check on that. But if you guys can, man, it would really help me out if you do end up getting a bumper sticker or a mouse pad or a coffee mug. A coffee mug. I'll try to add some more things later on down the road. But uh, first, you know, somebody's got to buy something. We got to, we got to, you know, do the show and support the show because 
this isn't cheap that's for damn sure i didn't realize it you know when i first started this and i put an investment into it but hey this is good quality you, you guys are going to be able to see it and that's the whole point right so go ahead and go to interstellarfrequency.info forward slash store and then that will take you to the area and then you can go to the etsy store and then do your thing um yeah so there you go and uh if you guys want to send me an email man send me emails tell me a reminiscing story of something crazily stupid that we that you might have experienced or something or shoot me a phone call uh, 760-440-8131 leave me a message or send me an email chris at interstellarfrequency.info uh, leave me a message somewhere man something give me give me something when you ended up doing something crazy or maybe when you were in college and you did something crazy or well, I don't know hell it's gotta be something funny out there that you don't mind sharing and if you guys want to share great that'd be cool we can share it with some somewhere on the, on the show here and talk about it that'd be neat so until next time frequency. End of transmission. Stadium Stark.